So this video will be for finding rational zeros. Um, remember that zeros are the same as the x-intercepts. Uh, but again, we're looking for the rational ones, the rational zeros. I don't know if you recall what a rational number is, but um, a rational number is a fraction, like one half, one seventh, and they're also the um, integers. So the integers are like positive negative one, positive negative two, um, even zero counts, you know, for the integers. And so uh, we have all fractions and all integers. So the way we find this, now we're looking at these complicated polynomials. So here's a polynomial, 15x cubed plus 47x squared plus 5x minus 3. You may want to take a moment and look on your calculator and see what this will look like. What you should find out when you type this in is that it crosses the x-axis at three spots. Now, it does this, and, and that's great, but the only problem is, is that we only get one value that we can see well. We only get x is equal to negative 3. The others are fractions. These are 1 -fifth and negative 1 third, which we could do some guessing, and we could kind of figure this out. But we need a different way to, to determine these. So what we have in math is what's called the rational zero theorem. And what we'll do is we'll take all values p over q. Now, let me show you how we get p. So where does p come from? Well, we are going to take this number here. So let me change the color. So we're going to take this number here, um, and this is going to give us our p. p could be all the multiples. So it's just going to be like 1 and 3. 1 times 3 gives us um, 3 and we'll get that. Now our options for P are 1 and 3. Our options for Q come from 15, this first coefficient. And so Q can be, all of our multiples are 1 and 15, and then there's 3 times 5, so we have 3 and 5. So we have quite a list here the rational zeros theorem will give us this long list. I'm going to put them in order. So we'll have them. And basically, what the rational zeros theorem says is it says that for p over q, um, if as we are taking it from this 3 and 15, we can make a list. This gives us the set of all possible rational zeros. Now, as we are looking at this, you're probably thinking, good gracious, that's a lot. And it is, it is a lot. So um, I had you put this equation into your calculator so that you could see that as long as you can find your negative 3, this integer, then you're actually going to save yourself a lot of time having to find the 1 -fifth and the negative 1 -third. But let's get back to this set of all possible rational zeros. This is also called um, list all potential 
zeros. Of course, we have to use the word rational here. Okay, so what they are, uh, we'll have 1 over 1, so that's going to give me 1. We have 3 over 1, so that's going to give me 3. Now, any of that repeat, I'm not going to write down. So next, I'm going to have 1 over 3, which is 1 third. And now, I'm going to have 3 over 3. Now, 3 over 3 is 1, so since it's already here, I'm not going to list it. Now, I'm going to do 1 over 5. And I'm going to do 3 over 5. Then 1 over 15. Oh, this looks like a 8, sorry. So I've got 1 15th. And then finally I get 3 over 15, but that's 1 fifth. So actually this is the list. And what the rational zeros not only gives us the set of all possible rational zeros, um, this, the set also includes, well, excuse me, that is what it gives us, but the set also includes positive and negative of each one. So this is a, a huge list. Um, it, it's not really wise to go about this. I used this method when I was learning the material because I didn't have my graphing calculator. They weren't as common um, back in the 90s when I was studying this. So um, I would suggest since you have your graphing calculator, to find what integers you can, and then we'll be using synthetic division to um, break it down and get more. Okay, thanks.